Thank you, Doug. So by now you all heard about uh, the, all what you need to know about the Heal RBF calculator and its prediction accuracy. Uh, however, one should remember that many of our cataract patients will suffer with, from uh, corneal astigmatism as well. Uh, that should be addressed during cataract surgery and preferably with toric IOLs. Now, so what is more obvious than to have an Heal RBF toric calculator? Now, um, uh, this calculator should be probably available on the next uh, LensStar update, so uh, I'm really looking uh, for that. Now, toric IOLs are a great uh, solution for patients with pre-existing corneal astigmatism. However, the results following the implantations are not always predictable. And uh, one of the main reasons for that is that standard keratometry and topography machines tend to yield inaccurate results uh, in assessing the net corneal astigmatic power. What they do, they measure the anterior cornea, but they assume that the relationship between the anterior and posterior corneal surfaces are constant, which is not always true. And it has been now five years since Doug Hoag had reminded us at the ACRS meeting uh, the role of the posterior cornea in torical calculations. And what he and his group uh, found that they, they looked at the posterior corneas of more than 700 eyes using a dull Scheinflug device, and they find that most of the corneas were steep along their vertical meridian. So what does it mean? So if most posterior corneas are steep vertically, and we know that the posterior cornea acts like a negative lens, it means that it creates a net plus power along the horizontal meridian and actually induces against the rule astigmatism. So uh, based on their data, they published the Baylor nomogram, which was the first step solution to address this problem. But since then, a great deal of work has been done to refine our understanding uh, of the posterior corneal astigmatism and to find maybe more accurate ways in how to incorporate it in our daily toric calculations. So uh, two main uh, paths has been taken. One is the mathematical models, which actually use anterior corneal uh, based measurements to calculate the net corneal astigmatism, and the ultimate goal, direct measurements of the posterior cornea. Now, unfortunately, as for today, it seems like the direct measurements of the posterior cornea are not as accurate as the best mathematical models, uh, which serves as holds-ups until we'll find better uh, devices that can measure, the direct, measure directly the posterior uh, cornea. And uh, you can probably imagine how uh, happy we were when uh, Warren Hill uh, chose to use our uh, methods of calculation, the Abulafia Koch formula, to be incorporated within uh, the Hill RBF Tori calculator. Now, I would like to tell you uh, a few words about this formula. This is a new formula which is based on a regression model. And it was developed in order to compensate for the posterior corneal astigmatism effect. Now, what it actually does, it takes anterior curvature-based corneal measurements and calculates a new estimated net corneal astigmatism with a new magnitude and a new meridian. Now, we have published this formula in a paper last year in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. And the purpose of this paper was to compare the accuracy of two models of toric IOL calculators with or without the adjustments of the Abulafia Koch formula and to compare those results with the Barrett toric calculator. Now, for developing the formula, we use data from the Antal Eye Center in Israel using lens star measurements, and for validating it, we use data from the Lion Eye Institute from WA Australia using the Owl Master 500 measurements. And for the method of calculations, we compared the Alcon and the Holiday toric calculators with or without the adjustments of the formula, and to the Barrett toric calculator, which has an internal mathematical model for the posterior cornea. And what we found was that there was a high correlation between the X and Y component of the measured corneal astigmatism and the estimated net corneal astigmatism. And although we tried several sophisticated models, it seems like a simple linear regression uh, was the most accurate, uh, at least in our data set. So when we looked at the validated group, so uh, we saw that uh, uh, 
both the Alcon and the Holiday Tory calculators yielded against the rule errors in predicted residual astigmatism with a centroid of more than 0.5 diopters. However, these results were fixed by the uh, regression formula with the centroid prediction errors uh, reduced almost to zero, shifting all these prediction errors to the center, and the results were similar to those of the Barrett Tory calculator. So uh, our conclusion was that the prediction of uh, post-operative astigmatic outcomes can be optimized by adjusting standard toric IOL calculators with the new formula. Now I would like to show you one example of one of my patients uh, and to see how, how it works. So this is a 50-year-old uh, female. She had cataract with pre-existing with the rural corneal astigmatism, and I'm lucky to have all these measurements in my office. And let's, let's go and do the calculations together. So we look at the marrings, they look good, and we validate that we are dealing with a symmetrical and regular astigmatism. And then uh, we should follow Warren Hill's methodology and to use primary and secondary supporting instrument in order to determine the steep meridian, and then to follow the same process for the power difference between the meridians and make sure that our primary instrument is aligned with the validated uh, uh, steep meridian. So let's look uh, at the holiday toric calculator. If we use that, we would probably pick a T5 lens. Uh, the Olsen with the standard toric calculator that is on the lens star, we'd probably pick a T5 as well. However, if we look at the Barrett toric calculator and the Hill RBF toric calculator, we would pick a T4 lens, and this is what I did. She had an uneventful cataract extraction. The final axis was just one degree off. Her post-op refraction was quite good, and she's uh, seeing 20-20 uh, unaided. So, and if we look at the errors in the predicted residual astigmatism, we can see that the holiday toric calculator and the Olsen with the standard calculator yielded against the rule prediction errors, which were quite high, whereas the Barrett and the Hill RBF toric calculator yielded uh, minimal prediction errors. And this is how it should look like on uh, the Torque Planner on the new uh, LensStar software. So thank you very much.